organizations that use both field service to manage on-site service and remote assist for mixed reality collaboration will find the two solutions integrate very easily. You can utilize work order information in remote assist and at the end of the call, post a record of it to the work order. The integration is important because one, you'll allow technicians to get the information they need from experts while on site to increase the likelihood of fixing the issue during the first trip. And two, it'll help managers understand the job types and customer assets that require more attention and create training programs. Let's take a look at setting up the users, mobile apps, and work orders to use field service and remote assist together. For the purposes of this video, we will show the remote assist mobile app that is used on mobile phones and tablets, though the experience is similar for using remote assist on a Microsoft HoloLens mixed reality headset. First, ensure you have the correct users and licenses to use Remote Assist and Field Service together. Log into Dynamics as a System Administrator and head to the Admin Center and see your list of users. Using Remote Assist involves at least two users, one who will represent the expert who gives guidance from a remote location and the other who will represent a technician, also called a frontline worker, that is performing work and may need assistance from the expert. First, identify a user that will be the expert. This user will only need Microsoft Teams and not field service or remote assist. As just one example of giving this user access to Teams, we assigned an Office 365 license, but there are other licenses and ways of getting Teams access. Then select a user who represents the technician. This user will need access to Microsoft Teams, field service, and remote assist. There are two ways to go about this. The first option, which is shown in this video, is to give this user a field service license and a Teams license, and then sign up for a Remote Assist trial later on in the Remote Assist mobile app. As an example, the first license here gives the user access to field service, and the Office license gives Microsoft Teams access. A second option is to give the user a field service license and a Remote Assist license or trial because Remote Assist includes a Teams license. For the second option, go to Billing then Purchase Services and search for Remote Assist. There are options for Remote Assist alone and Remote Assist in addition to other apps like Field Service, and you can choose to buy a license or start a free trial. Know that Microsoft licensing is subject to change, so you shouldn't necessarily look to add the licenses in this video, but simply focus on giving the expert access to Teams and the technician or frontline worker access to Teams, Remote Assist, and Field Service. At the time this video was filmed, Microsoft Teams is included with a Remote Assist license. After setting up the users, set up a bookable resource and field service. This resource will eventually be scheduled work orders that he or she will view on the field service mobile app. Go to Resources, then create a new one, but in our example, we will select one that was already created. This resource will have a resource type of user and the related user record will be the one we assigned a field service and Teams license to earlier. In the field service section, don't forget to enable access to field service mobile. Next, ensure the user related to your resource has the correct security role and field security profile. Go to settings, then security, then users, and find your technician user. This is the same one that the resource is related to and that has the licenses. Assign the field service resource security role. Then go into the user record and select field security profiles in the top. From here, assign the field service resource field security profile. Next, verify you can log into field service mobile with the technician user. Launch field service mobile on your mobile device. And from the home screen, go to settings. Then sign in with the technician user credentials. And then hit sync. You'll know you signed in successfully when you don't receive an error and you can see records like accounts or work orders. Next, open the Remote Assist mobile app on your mobile device. This app is available in the App Store and is only available and usable on iOS and Android devices that have their appropriate AR kit and AR Core capabilities. Sign in with the same user credentials you used to sign into Field Service Mobile. When prompted, continue with the free trial of Dynamics 365 Remote Assist. In addition, enable the integration with Dynamics 365 
to connect Remote Assist and Field Service. If needed, you can go to Settings and enable the integration from there as well. Next, verify you can sign into Microsoft Teams as your expert user. This is a different user than the technician user. In this example, we are logging into Teams on a Windows 10 Surface laptop. However, the expert can log into Teams from their mobile app on their mobile device as well. Using Teams in the web client for remote assist calls is not supported at the time this video was created. Now that we have the appropriate users and licenses set up, and each user can log into their respective apps, we can see how remote assist calls integrate with the field service work order process. The first step is to create a work order in field service. As a field service administrator or dispatcher user, log into field service and go to work orders. Then create a new one like you would any work order. When work orders aren't created manually, they are created by cases, IoT alerts, or agreements. In this example, there is a diagnosis and repair work order for a heater at our customer's building. Beyond adding basic details, head to the settings section and enter a support contact. This represents the expert or remote collaborator that should be called in case the technician has any questions, but the technician will not be limited to calling this contact only. Select or create a bookable resource record and ensure the related email address matches your remote collaborator's user email. Next, go to the schedule board and schedule your work order to your technician bookable resource. There are many ways to schedule and in this example, we will find the work order on the map and drag the map pin to the technician. Next, head to Field Service Mobile and see your newly booked work orders. As is typical, the technician will select a work order and view all relevant details like the start time, work order type, and customer asset that needs attention. He or she will see the support contact that we noted earlier on the work order. If during the work order, the technician needs help, he or she can trigger a remote assist call. Technicians can select the command icon in the top right of the work order form and select Remote Assist to automatically open the Remote Assist mobile app via a deep link. This assumes the Remote Assist app is already downloaded onto the phone. The support contact noted on the work order will be queued up for a call. If not using the deep link, technicians can manually open the Remote Assist app and search for a remote collaborator to call. The expert, who is most likely at a different location like an office, will receive the call like any other team's video call. Once he or she answers, the remote collaborator expert will be able to see what the technician on site is seeing, in this case a heater the technician is trying to fix. At this point, the technician expert will continue like any other remote assist call. As an example, the expert can draw a mixed reality arrow on the technician's field of view, instructing him or her how to open the machine. The technician can select the record button to record a video of this call to reference later on for training or verification purposes. The technician can draw too, like placing arrows to describe the question they have about the machine. And other than arrows, the expert can draw lines to describe the answer. Both users will select the trash icon to remove any of their annotations to make room for new ones. If needed, the technician will select the snapshot icon to take a picture of the current view and then make additional drawings like noting the steps in the process and then save it to their phone's photo library. Using the chat capabilities, the technician has the option to send the snapshot to the expert for their records. In addition, the remote collaborator expert can send over more helpful files like a PDF diagram of the machine. When the technician gets all the information he or she needs, the technician or remote collaborator expert will end the call by selecting the red end call button. At this point, the technician will go back to Field Service Mobile and mark the work order as completed. At the end of the call, the call log and files shared between technician and remote collaborator are displayed. Select Post to add these call details to the work order. From here, the technician can simply choose an environment and booking. By default, it will show today's bookings for the logged in resource. 
Back in Dynamics 365 field service, a dispatcher or manager can review the completed work order. In the timeline of the work order, they will see a remote assist phone call took place and it will note the duration and the people involved. This is great for reporting purposes where managers can see which types of work orders require help from experts and look into creating appropriate training programs and knowledge articles. In addition, the files shared during the call are automatically uploaded to cloud storage and can be accessed later on. Lastly, the Remote Assist call recording is uploaded to Microsoft Stream and can be accessed alongside all other meeting recordings, even those not related to Remote Assist calls. This is another good resource to train technicians for better service. This integration between Field Service and Remote Assist is constantly evolving and deepening, so look for new videos and documentation on docs.microsoft.com.